Hi there, welcome back. Well, here's another experimental video. I say experimental because as you can see, there's a breadboard on there. Something over there is flicking 460.33. There's my uh, Grundig Satellite uh, 2100. And there's a box from PCBWay. The coffee is extra. Well, what am I doing here? Well, if you follow my channel and you saw the restoration of this Grundig, I mentioned when I was doing that that I was probably going to build a little external BFO for this. There is one, uh, it's called, a, I believe it's called a Zusatz 2000 or 2100. It's the BFO unit that uh, used to come with this guy and it fits in the back in a particular socket. And that one is great because it actually uh, takes out a whole lot of signals that you need. And one of them is the, um, it allows you to switch off the automatic gain control. And there's a manual gain control, um, which you can use, which does help. But I don't want to go into that. There are quite a few coils on there that I find uh, pretty difficult to, to get, if not impossible. So I decided I'd try to build one myself. And... Um, it's, it's not that difficult. It's actually quite easy <laughs> to you start messing with it. And th this is the result. I mean, this is what came of it, my experiment. Now, what I did uh, do is I actually found a fellow YouTuber who's got a, uh, an actual website, blog site, and um, he found a, a circuit which is um, from way back. Let me show you. This gentleman, actually, um, he's got a YouTube channel. There's a link to his YouTube video on here where he demonstrates the use of this. And this circuit he actually got from a gentleman called, well, a publication where a gentleman called uh, Doug DeMore, uh, who was a ham operator, I believe he's passed away, published this in 1997 uh, in CQ magazine. It's called the Tunable BFO for Collins Filters. It's actually just the BFO circuit. It's an oscillator circuit and um, it then has just an amplifier buffer. So it's actually quite simple. This is the actual oscillator and he uses one of these uh, IF uh, cores, this sort of thing. Um, he uses the particular one, the third IF one, from uh, which I got from Mauser. I'll give you the links in the description if you want to get that. But this is by no means a complete project, so bear with me for a minute. Um, what this does is it uh, basically uses a uh, one of those cores as the adjustable uh, inductor. You're only using the ground, or actually only using um, half of the one side depending on how much inductance you want. You can experiment, and that's the whole point of this, is to experiment. But um, you basically tune that inductor to give you a variable inductance, and then you've got two capacitors. The one capacitor goes to ground, it's a 50 uh, picofarad um, MP0 cap. And the other capacitor, which forms the bridge of capacitors in a culprits, I think it is, oscillator, the other capacitor is actually produced by this diode, this uh, very uh, very cap diode. This uh, 100 picofarad is just basically coupling this capacitor to the joint of those capacitors. Now I'm not going to go into all the theory on how this works. This is more experimental, as the breadboard will tell you. And um, I couldn't find exact components. So it's a question of experimenting. If you know what this thing is doing, it's not that hard. You know that basically from this point here, you've got a capacitor to ground and another capacitor to ground. This is basically a um, at the junction of the two capacitors is where you put your, in your uh, variable inductor. And you can then adjust the frequency, the oscillation frequency, by adjusting the inductor, you can do that. But the alternative, and you do that to get the, the rough frequency of uh, IF frequency that you want. But uh, the better way to do that is actually to adjust the capacitance. And you can put a variable capacitor from here to ground. But better than that is actually a um, very cap diode. This one, I believe, goes to about 40 uh, picofarads. I'm not sure exactly how much it is, but whatever it is, if it's more than, than you need, 
you just make this capacitor smaller because those capacitors are then in, in series. If it's uh, close to what you need, you make this capacitor larger. Again, not going to the theory, but this very cap changes capacitance depending on the voltage you apply to it, DC voltage, and that DC voltage is obtained from this uh, pot. The pot's one side is connected to ground, the other side is connected through a 39K resistor. This is to reduce the span, and it's connected basically to the power supply, which comes off from here, 12 volt supply. And this capacitor here is just to filter it a bit more. So you are adjusting the capacitance of that diode, and by doing that, you're adjusting the oscillation frequency. Now, the amount of oscillation frequency change you want is very small, which is why um, this capacitance is actually, well, fairly small. That's why the 100 picofarad dilutes it. If you look at it from here, from this point to ground, and that point to ground, you've basically got two capacitors in parallel. Yeah, that's all it is, really. It's two capacitors in parallel. So you're adding whatever capacitance you're getting from here, and which is being, um, what is it, padded by this one, to the 50 picofarads to adjust the oscillation frequency ever so slightly. Then this thing goes in here, that's the oscillation transistor, and it produces a supposedly a sine wave at this point. And as I found, it's not quite a sine wave, as we'll see. It's sort of. It's, uh, it's the right frequency, but it's a little bit ugly. Then it goes into here, and this section here does another amplification. This section here takes, you take your, uh, your signal, and you've got another transistor here, which just acts as an amplifier. He's using the 2222, which I happen to have, miraculously. And there, the power supply comes in. It goes through a 100 ohm resistor. It's basically just creating an isolation. There's the uh, small filter cap, 0.1 microfarad. That then uses, that there uses another one of these IF cores or coils, or transformers actually, as a load. You use the primary of that one as a load for that transistor. It's biased with that resistor and that resistor. And it's got a um, emitter resistor of 270 bypassed. So what we get here is actually coming out of the secondary. You can take it off there, but if you take it out of the secondary, you can actually tune this particular one for the uh, peak transfer to this side. Remember, this is an IF transformer. It's supposed to be tuned to the 455 kilohertz. The problem I had is I need 460 on mine. And... Um, these transformers are usually for 455. I couldn't find them for 60, but it seems to work. And you take it out here, and I've actually put this signal through a, um, a pot, which then distributes as much amplitude as I want to as the BFO signal, as the actual, um, basically, transmitter of a carrier signal. So let me show you what, what I've actually done on here. I've set this up here so that I can test it first and I actually then did the boards and I've got the boards here are the boards and obviously these boards I must admit these are going to be experimented on this is basically prototyping stage I am not sure that this thing is going to produce exactly what I want so I've got 10 boards I order them from PCB way and I want to thank them because they're sponsoring this video again thanks very much Great pleasure to work with you and uh, to get results like this whenever I want to experiment. That's what uh, prototyping is all about and it's certainly made a lot easier by really affordable boards and quick turnaround. But this is what it started off as. And let me show you what we're getting. That is the signal I'm getting and I can adjust it in terms of, terms of amplitude. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of weird. Very weird, actually. But ultimately, the uh, fundamental is what counts. Although, obviously, this does produce a lot of harmonics, and I'm not happy with that. So, I'll see. Maybe if I build, when I build it, this is why I, I did the boards. Because this thing works with very small capacitors. 50 picofarads is fairly small, 
and some of the capacitors on these uh, breadboards and all the wiring and inductance and everything else flying around, that could be the cause of the problem. However, what I have been able to do is I've actually been able to tune it quite well. See that? I want 460. Now what I've done is I've set the um, vericap diode or the pot that adjusts the vericap diode, which is that little guy over there. I've set it halfway and then I can tune the, um, the core, I can tune that guy till I get exactly 460. And it's pretty close. Let me see if I can get it any closer. Even the proximity of my hands makes it go up a bit. Okay. Not bad. That's about as close as it's going to get. Now, if I turn this guy fully clockwise, I get 461.3. So I've got 1.3 kilohertz that way. and about 2 kilohertz that way. So it's slightly out of balance, so what I need to do is I need to... Where's 460? If I do that, I can actually stop it at 460 pretty exactly, you see? Now obviously I need to play with that so that I can get it exactly in the middle for the uh, middle setting of the of the pot. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build this. I'm going to build one of these on the boards and um, take it from this to what will hopefully be a neat nice PC board and then we'll see if we get the same results there and if we get the same results there. I really would like to make this a little bit nicer. This is really a bit weird. Anyway, let's get going. So here's the board and it's a double sided board but um, combination of through hole and uh, surface mount. Things like the bypass uh, capacitors, filter capacitors, the point ones, I've made them surface mount. It well, it's just makes it easier for me, I've got them. And some of the resistors as well, the ones I know that I probably will not change. And then, of course, there's through hole for the pots and for some of the, the diodes, the transistors, and the uh, IF transformers. I think, I think, I may have actually detected that I drew or connected this IF transformer wrong. So I'm going to put that IF transformer in there very lightly. In other words, just tack it on. So if I need to flip it around, I can actually just put it on the other side. It's not the opt optimum, but this is prototyping, so I don't really mind. Well, let me get on with it. Okay, so what have I done here? And why have I done it this way? Well, I decided to do the BFO part first, the oscillator section first, and um, get that working. Now, what I need to do is just to install that uh, first IF transformer, that T4 over there. And I'm not sure which way around it goes, so I'm just going to tack it on, and then I'm going to set it up, power it up. I've got these two wires here, the black and red, that's for 12 volts. There's a 9.1 volt Zener here, which uh, brings it down to 9 volts for the oscillator. To give it a steady voltage, steady supply. Quite a bit of um, 0.1, quite a few 0.1 microfarad uh, filtering, decoupling. So um, I'm going to just tack that uh, IF transformer in there, and then I'm going to put this on the scope and see what we can get. So this is what we've got here. I've got the uh, supply coming in here. 
12 volts and then I've got the uh, scope connected to ground and to that capacitor which is the one that couples the uh, frequency from or the oscillation from the transistor to the amplifier stage and let's see on the scope what we've got not exactly what I wanted hmm it's giving us <laughs> a periodic wave waveform certainly not a sine wave it is adjustable ever so slightly it's about 370 uh, kilohertz nowhere near the 460 that I need and it also um, is ugly it's about uh, 900 millivolts nearly 1 volt RMS so the amplitude is very high I'm going to adjust the uh, core of the IF transformer and see what the scope of this thing is that's about as far as out, out as it'll come, and it's only giving me 416. So obviously I can go down, but not up. So obviously those two are not good. The two that I've connected on there are not good. I'm going to swap it around. It's what I thought. I sort of figured I'd made a mistake. I'm going to swap it around and see what we get on using the other two uh, tags, taps, on that uh, IF transformer. Now to get these other two taps in, I've actually got to put this in. I had, I had these two taps. I want those two. So the way to do that is to put it in from the underside, on the underside of the board. That's what I'll do. I'm still going to just, just touch it in with solder. Ow! Solder burns finger. Yep. If you don't know that, you've got to burn yourself. By just soldering in the two, I can very easily get it out. If I need to make corrections. Okay, let's do that again. Set this up like that. And I'll now need to just turn it over to adjust that one there. Let's see what we get. I'm going to hit the power. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Amplitude is lower. It's at about half a volt RMS, but that's fine. Wave looks a bit better. And it's at 476. Okay, so let me try and get this down. 480 thereabouts. I won't worry about much precision at this point. I just want to get it in the vicinity of 460. Too low. There's 458. And I won't worry too much about um, the exact frequency because what I'll do then, when I've got the amplifier stage put in, I will then be able to adjust it um, or set it more precisely with that frequency counter that I've got there. All right, that section works. So now I'm just going to finish uh, populating the rest of the board. This is the uh, amplifier stage, just an amplifier stage. Um, this transformer on the output is another IF transformer, and you use that basically to, well, I guess, to clean up the output so it doesn't have too many. Uh, it'll have some um, harmonics, but hopefully not too many. So um, let me finish that. Okay, here we are. 
There's one, uh, there's actually one resistor missing here. That's a 3.3K across the primary of the um, second live transformer. They say that is optional, so I'll leave it out for now. I think I have, I have everything. That there, that there was actually a, that there is just a, a copper track, which I wanted to leave um, open so that I can put a shield on here. And that could just be shorted to ground, but I got that wrong. That should have been exposed copper and I did it wrong. So I need to correct that. That's one of the things I need to correct and putting a shield is no, makes no sense anyway, because the uh, IF transformer's got shields and it's on the underside. So that shouldn't affect it. So let me, let me test it again, see what happens. Okay, we um, connect the power to here and here we connect the scope to the output and we should be able to flick a switch that should change the amplitude that should change the frequency ever so slightly all right what do we get on the scope let's put it on well we've got something Clipping, but something. The amplitude control is working. It's also affecting the frequency, which it shouldn't. No, it's the shielding. It's the um, actual ground of the pot. I've got to ground the pots. Let's see what happens if I actually short the body of the pot to ground. See if that makes any difference. Better. Okay, so what have we got there? 471. This thing is really clipping. It's, it's, it's okay, but it's clipping too much. What happens if I put a 3.3k resistor across there? I don't get much difference. That is definitely not a very nice wave. I mean, yes, it will uh, act as a BFO. Not a problem because the fundamental is there. If I do that, there's the fundamental. Slap on 460, I can adjust that. Then it's got all these harmonics. You know, it makes no difference. I mean, ultimately you want that fundamental to be strong and steady. And um, we're going to see just how steady it is in a minute. But, hey, uh, not what I had in mind. Let's see if we can, or let's see how steady it is now. So let's have a look at the uh, frequency counter. What I have set up here is I've got the uh, uh, adjustment pot for the adjustment frequency slab bang in the middle. And I'm going to switch it on and I want 460 on there with it in the middle. We'll start with it in the middle and see how we go from there. We connect this here. We don't need the scope anymore. 465. We're at 465. I want 460 in the middle. That's going the wrong way. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn this completely counterclockwise and we get 460.48 and completely clockwise and we get 459.08. Now that is way less than we had before way less. I needed about 3 kilohertz and I had that. So what have I done differently? I'm trying to remember what changes I made. I think, yes, I think I do know. The 39k resistor that I had there between the power supply and the top end of that, I think that was eliminated. That was R11, was it? 
R13. Where is R13? Oh, that's on that end. I'm just going to short that out and see what happens. I'm going to short that R13. Literally just solder a piece of wire across the resistor. If it doesn't pop out. No, it's just easier to take out the resistor. These are actually very easy to remove. You just heat it on one side, heat it on the other, and away it goes. And now I'll just solder this across it, basically short it out. Resistance zero, that gives me more span on the power supply. Not very pretty. That's better. Now what have we got? Let's see. Go to one way. Let's go to the left. It's giving me 460.284. The other one. Ah, I see that's better. Much better. So what have we got? 456 point, oh, too much accuracy there, 456, call it 456.6, and on the other end, 460.3, that gives us 3.7 kilohertz span from one end to the other. I know I get a span of 3.7, so I can go to 458.5 with this on that end. That should give me 460 about the middle. So let's try again. There you go, 458.5. In the middle, it's not linear. Damn it. Gives me 1.5 that way. And 2 that way. Make that 58. See how we go. Let's call it 458. It's 2 kilohertz below and near as damn it 2 kilohertz above. That's pretty good. This is definitely not a linear. There's 460. So we know that's not linear. That's because of the diode. The um, vericap diode isn't particularly linear, but it doesn't matter. What it tells us is that we can get. 2 kilohertz below the IF frequency, which should be enough. And we should get 2 kilohertz above, damn close, 1.8. So that should work. And now, see how stable this is. That's at 460. And it's just sitting there. And this thing's out in the open. I've got no, nothing going on here. So other than the fact that it looks absolutely terrible as a sine wave, this thing is fairly stable. Very stable. But it looks terrible. Bloody hell. Well, it is what it is. It hasn't moved. It's been going between 460.04 and 460.05. It's been flicking around for some time now. I'm sure, I'm sure that this thing would uh, vary slightly if I leave it here for very, very long. Or if um, immediately after I turn on, it probably won't be absolutely accurate. But it seems that whatever frequency you dial in there, those diodes are pretty stable. They're not linear, but they're stable. 
So that's it. That's it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this video off for now, and I'll tell you what's my, my plan. My plan is this. I am going to test this later tonight. And I will be basically figuring out if this thing is worth building, if it's worth developing on. If I decide that it's worth developing on, I'm going to figure out what changes I need to make to get rid of that really horrible sine wave. Wave. In other words, how do I get this thing cleaned up? And also, I'm going to ask for some help because, um, as I've said before, a few of the viewers have a heck of a lot of more knowledge than I do on this. This is such a simple thing that it really is annoying me that um, I can't get it cleaner. So, um, I'm doing something stupid here, but this board is by no means finished. I'm going to make the changes as I uh, make the uh, alterations on here. Any suggestions you might have to get this thing to be a really viable piece of equipment? By the way, you see that's changed, but that's because I've been fiddling here, okay? Um, any ideas you might have, any suggestions you might have, please give them to me in the comments. I really appreciate it because what I'm going to do is I'll be uh, doing version two of this board. And then uh, ultimately, if it's worthwhile, I uh, share the project uh, so that you can just order them. These were sponsored by PCB Way, and uh, they are sponsoring this video. So I want to thank them for that. And I want to thank you. Um, stick around at the end of the video. I'll be doing a test later tonight just to see how well this thing allows us to decode or to receive the uh, single sideband uh, reception. Right, I've got this set up. I've got the supply coming in. I've got the uh, signal, the output, going straight to the antenna. Now bear in mind we've got an attenuator down there. It's going straight to the antenna. I've got the external antenna selected, but it's actually bleeding through enough for the operation, hopefully. I also see the uh, field strength here. And I actually control this. Um, I can see what strength my signal is that, that's coming through. And I can adjust the uh, amplitude of that signal accordingly. I'll show you the effect as we go along. Let's just see if we can pick something up now. I've got it on the uh, 20, uh, 40 meter band, so 7 point something megahertz. And I believe there are a few chatterboxes on here. Not much, but let's see what we can get. Can you hear that? I'm just adjusting this very, very slightly and trying to match the amplitude with the strength of the signal because the automatic gain control is working. Gotta keep waiting for them to come back. Thank 
para esta, eh, esta hora de, del día eh, con eh, 30 grados, eh, ahora la medianoche. Así que Horacio, gracias eh, por el contacto. That is a maximum of the moment. Una nueva oportunidad. Lima Whisky 2 Delta Oscar Delta Eco Alpha 2 Kilo. Because that was a very strong signal, I can actually, I need to actually put the amplitude higher so that the carrier is sufficient to actually allow the decoding of the, um, of the sideband. With weaker signals, if I leave that on maximum, any weaker signal will just die completely because the uh, automatic gain control is now receiving this very strong carrier and it'll then reduce the gain which means that any weak signal coming in just gets swamped. So, you've got to put that down and maybe we'll pick something else up. It's obviously from Spain. The atmospheric conditions today are atrocious. This thing is crackling and going crazy. But yeah, that's what we that's what I wanted to achieve. I've managed to uh, get this thing to work. As I said, it's giving us uh, a lot of noise, a hell of a lot of noise. Um, I think it's got to do with all the harmonics going through there. They shouldn't even be going through there because this thing's supposed to be an IF transformer which attenuates all other frequencies. So that's our demonstration, and I'm actually quite surprised that this works. It's a bloody noisy signal, but it works. And it's noisy in strange ways. It shouldn't be, because that should be uh, acting as a normal IF transformer and filtering out all other harmonics, but it's not. But anyway, nevertheless, it is working. And I certainly hope I get some feedback from guys who've got uh, a little bit more experience on this. Oscillators, which is basically what this is, can be a real pain, because... Um, they drive you crazy. They work when they shouldn't and they don't when they should. And this is more or less halfway between. So if uh, you've enjoyed that, please click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And thank you for watching and thanks to PCV Way for the sponsorship. And I hope to see you back soon with a continuation of some more projects. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Stay safe.